Bureau. In response, the French government poured their resources into the Maginot Line, a massive self-contained fortification that ran the entire length of their eastern border. Unfortunately, the Maginot Line turned out to be one of the greatest miscalculations of modern military history. Medal of Honor Underground is the sequel slash prequel to Medal of Honor, the highly acclaimed World War II first-person shooter released for the PlayStation. Developed by DreamWorks Interactive, Medal of Honor Underground was released in the year 2000 along with a crappier version of the game also released for the Game Boy Advance, the latter being utterly panned by critics. Now I haven't actually played this so I can't give my two cents on it, I just know it was made by Rebellion Developments, who later went on to bigger and better things. Now whilst the Game Boy version might be a bit of a write-off, the PlayStation version is as good if not better than the first game, and easily one of the best shooting games available for the console, much like its predecessor. In this game you take control of Manon Baptiste, a female member of the French Resistance, most well known for working with Jimmy Patterson and the OSS in the first game. I think this game almost ties with Perfect Dark for being one of the first FPS titles to have a female protagonist. But of course you don't hear social justice warriors talking about that do you? I guess that would actually mean they'd have to play a video game. On that note, Underground chronicles various missions Manon undertakes throughout the entire Second World War. Initially, she's in the French Resistance and has to complete some basic missions for them before she catches the attention of the OSS and rises up the ranks to the position she'd be known for in the first Medal of Honor game. This is what I mean when I say it's both a prequel and a sequel, as the game kind of jumps forward a few years with each ensuing mission. There's no character development to speak of, and save for Manon losing her brother in the first mission, she's mute the entire time, serving as little more than a vessel for the player. Missions are again broken up into three or four smaller maps, and each of the missions is top and tailed by a cinematic that features historical wartime footage, utilized in a sense to work with the context of each of the game's missions. There's a greater mission variety this time around. One of the more notable exceptions includes a mission where you're in Africa, in Casablanca of all places. One part of the mission even taking place during a heavy sandstorm. The opening mission has Manon sneaking around the Paris streets at night time, avoiding Nazi patrols as she works with the resistance. One of the better missions takes place in Crete, where you first explore the city's streets before heading into Knossos for the final portion of the mission, inside the labyrinth of the Minotaur, where the Nazis have set up AA guns. Most of this stuff has a real sense of realism to it, however having said that, a later mission has you inside a German castle that feels very Wolfenstein-y, as you fight guys wearing large suits of armor and brandishing broadswords as you navigate through crypts and hidden passageways. Underground obviously uses the same graphics engine as the first game, and I think it's safe to say they're really pushing that engine to its absolute limits, and you will notice better textures overall as well as impressive animation across the board. Levels set in the catacombs or around various European villages at night time show off the most impressive visuals, and it's a great example of creativity overcoming technological limitations. Running the game in an emulator will smooth out most of the rough edges and steady out the frame rate, and it's surprising how well the game performs and looks all these years later. There's a few new weapons introduced, though most of them return from the first game, which makes sense considering it's still set in the same time period. The soundtrack is also mostly recycled, though Michael Giacchino has added or modified certain motifs to make them unique to Manon as a character. Again, he's just done a bang up job, and I couldn't say a bad word about the soundtrack if I tried. Those moments during a mission when you're gunning down waves of Nazis as you try to complete your objectives and that cinematic score kicks in is epic as all hell. This is really more of an expansion pack than a sequel, hence why they called it Medal of Honor Underground as opposed to Medal of Honor 2, I suppose. Despite the change of scenery and all that, it's still more of the same, but this isn't entirely a bad thing. Your mission objectives again range from blowing things up, collecting important pieces of intel through to missions where you're undercover and have to infiltrate more heavily guarded areas. Manon disguises herself as a photographer during these levels, even able to hold a camera which not only doubles as a prop, but can also be used to photograph important documents needed to complete the mission. Go ahead. As a nice little side feature, Nazis will pose for the camera if you aim it at them. I don't think you're ever forced into remaining stealthy, and I had a few times when my cover was blown and I had to shoot my way through the remainder of the level, but shooting still functions well enough that this isn't too much of an issue, and the levels are littered with health items and ammo to keep you well stocked up. I wouldn't describe the shooting as run and gun, it's more run, stop, shoot and run again. Now by that I mean you generally have to stop moving, and bring up the manual aiming system to ensure you're firing the most accurately. 
Enemies are also restricted by this mechanic and usually you've got a second or two to line up a shot and fire before enemies do the same to you. This doesn't apply to enemies with automatic weapons, however, who can just unload on you without so much as a second of delay. Again, these pricks are going to be the main source of deaths in the game, and even on the default difficulty, they mess your shit up really quickly. There's a few annoying instances when enemies will also spawn behind you, but overall this isn't too hard a game. However, if you die, you can expect to restart the entire level from scratch, which does suck, but as they say, live and learn. And Underground is a pretty fair game for the most part. Again, the controls though, they aren't all that great. The default mappings are very confusing and something you'll want to quickly change to your liking, but there's also some basic navigation issues that suck too. Like being stuck on invisible barriers in some of the more narrow areas, through to weird and unexplainable hit detection issues when manual aiming. This occurs when you've got your crosshair aiming at something and your bullets go either above or below your intended target for no apparent reason. Aside from that, there's nothing really earth-shatteringly wrong with this game, and considering the hardware and the platform it was developed for, it passes with flying colours. In fact, it excels. I think people who played this game when it first came out are the same people who'll still sing high praise for it, and yeah, fair enough, nostalgia is a powerful thing. Is Medal of Honor Underground a masterpiece though? Well, I don't know if that's fair to say. Like its predecessor, it's a game that did the best with what it had at the time, and it's true that playing it nowadays, it does show its age in so many ways but the core of the whole thing is still pretty damn solid, and it just feels like a game that's really a labour of love. I mean, it came from that untainted period in gaming where the console gaming market wasn't saturated with shooters, and there's something so enjoyable about playing a game during a period when console FPS games were really in their infancy. I guess the other reason why these kind of games are so appealing is because they're based off real-world events. And that's why all the modern warfares and all the Black Ops games to ever be released won't ever hold a candle to the way a game like Medal of Honor Underground makes you feel inside. When you look at the list of shooting games released for the PlayStation, the console had a pretty good run, and I'd say that if you can be patient and overlook a lot of ragged edges and sweep away the dust and cobwebs, then Medal of Honor Underground is damn good fun. Viva la resistance.